What comes to mind when you think of wax? Candles, crayons, maybe this? If you're a nostalgia buff, you might have a completely different interpretation of wax. Remember wax lips, wax soda bottles, sex wax, vinyl records? If you're like me, the vision of wax forever etched in your memory are wax pack trading cards. Believe it or not, if you do some digging, you can still find many of these classics available today, like wax candy, surf wax, classic and new releases of LPs can even be found at your local Walmart. Unfortunately, you'd be hard pressed to find a trading card company that still produces wax packs today. Certainly not Topps, Flair, or Donruss, who have all opted to wrap their cards in plastic or foil. They might argue that this is an improvement, but I beg to differ. Since the big trading card companies have all abandoned the process of manufacturing wax packs and the methods and mechanics used to make these marvelous masterpieces have all been decommissioned, you might ask yourself, is it even possible to make wax packs today? I believe we can, but for that to happen, we get to head to the art lab. So join me, Scott Circlin, for a brief history on vintage wax packs and how we can recreate these amazing artifacts using common everyday materials and modern digital tools. To the art lab. <laughs> Here we are in the art lab where in previous episodes, we created trading cards for some of the worst movies ever made. But what good are bad movie trading cards without wax wrappers? So today we're going to create wax wrappers for these cinematic disaster pieces. Mac and me, Troll 2, Plan 9 from Outer Space, The Room, Manos, The Hands of Fate, and Miami Connection. So let's get to it. Now, we want these packs to look as authentic as possible. To do that, we're going to enlist the help of Retro Supply Co. They specialize in crafting digital tools that bring nostalgic touches to our designs. Retro Supply has a massive catalog of brushes, fonts, actions, and additional tools that you can use in your favorite software. From Procreate, Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity, and even Clip Studio Paint for all of you comic creators out there. Seriously, this is my secret weapon when it comes to achieving a vintage aesthetic. The products I'll be using in this video are Ink Champ, which allows you to achieve the same imperfections you get from off-register analog screen printing common on wax wrappers. And Duplitone, which mimics the lo-fi screen tone effects common in old school comics and card packs. I'm going to start by manipulating some photos to create the black and white line art for our wax wrapper designs. You know, as cool as wax packs are, you may be wondering why they don't make them anymore. Wax packs had a pretty good run. Though the first baseball cards can be traced back to the 1800s, modern collectible cards and wax packs gained popularity in the 1950s with the introduction of Topps baseball cards. Before long, other companies like Flair and Donruss sprung up and expanded from mostly sports cards to sets based on movies, television, and other original properties. Though you can still find wax wrappers used today with some bubblegum and suckers like Bazooka or Tootsie Pops, the use of wax wrappers for trading cards was phased out in the early 90s in favor of plastic and later foil. The argument was plastic and foil offered better protection for the cards, making them less susceptible to damage from moisture and handling. Additionally, plastic and foil allowed for more elaborate designs and marketing opportunities. Card companies stopped including bubblegum around the same time for similar reasons. While most card companies started as tobacco and later gum manufacturers, it made sense to include a stick of gum to attract children to purchase the cards. But over time, it became apparent that the gum often damaged the cards, leaving stains and residue. So the bubblegum was phased out, but I'd argue that besmirching a card or two is a small price to pay for that classic wax pack bubblegum combo. Okay, the bubblegum wasn't all that great, but I'm in it for the nostalgia, and if you want to make an omelet, you gotta break a few eggs. 
So what do you prefer, classic wax packs or the new shiny foil wrappers? Leave a comment below. Alright, back to the process of making these wrappers. I'm getting inspiration from the cards of the era that each of these movies was from. Except for The Room, which came out in the 2000s, so technically it would have been foil. But it's one of the worst movies ever made, so I had to include it. For the wrapper for Mac and Me, I'm using Retro Supply's Duplitone brushes to capture the halftone effects similar to the ET wrappers. Since Mac and Me is a blatant ripoff of ET, I figured I'd rip off the look of the wrapper as well. Because wax wrappers were screen printed, they used a limited number of colors, which is why the colors on many classic wax packs seemed a bit off. It's important also to use a limited palette because when we use the Photoshop actions in Retro Supply's Ink Champ toolset, each color needs to be on a separate layer. Inkchamp allows you to make various modifications to achieve the vintage look you want. From the viscosity and trapping of the ink, adjustment of the plate settings, amount of distress, roughness of the edges, and the level of overprint and registration errors. You can see here what you can achieve with a little help from Retro Supply. Since the tracing paper we're using for our wrappers is too thin to run through most printers, I'm going to adhere it to a sheet of copy paper using a glue stick. I'll just glue a border around the edge of the copy paper and place the tracing paper on top. Now to print out the wrappers and the cards. I'm using my Cricut machine to cut out the cards. For the wax wrappers, I'll use a standard paper cutter. On to applying the wax. I demonstrated this process in my original wax pack video, which I'll leave a link to at the end of this video. If you're subscribed to my mailing list, you'll receive awesome extras like project templates and even a free set of retro supply brushes. You can sign up at my website where you'll also receive the free Comic Maker Starter Kit packed with fonts, brushes, templates, word balloons, and additional assets you can use in your creative projects. In addition, select members of my Patreon community will receive additional templates or layered Photoshop files for this project. So join us on Patreon using the link in the description. Time to wrap things up, literally. I'll cut the length of this bubble tape to the proper size. Now I'll combine it with a sticker and a stack of cards. Then I'll fold and wrap the pack in a wax wrapper. Now to seal it with my modified wood burning tool.
voila. There you have it, six of the worst movies ever made presented as collectible bubblegum cards. You have to see them to appreciate how authentic these packs look and feel. They really transport me back to a time when I was a kid where I would save up all my change and buy as many of these packs as I could, ripping them open, hoping I wouldn't get any doubles so that I can complete a full set. Here, have a closer look. Just about wraps things up. I think I'll throw a limited number of these packs on my website at cirqueworks.com. So get them before they're gone. And don't forget to check out Retro Supply and use my exclusive code below when you place your order. If you want to see me reverse engineer more classic nostalgia from the 70s, 80s, and 90s, then pop those like and subscribe buttons like you would a crusty old stick of bubble gum. And if you want a more in-depth look at how I recreate classic wax packs, then click on this video right up here. Wax on, wax off. Don't forget to breathe. Very important.